Our success rate when the course is completed, we do have a 95% success rate and it's a fully comprehensive course that covers absolutely everything that you need to revise for the exam. We recommend around 50 hours of study to complete the course, but it can be done at your own pace and you have access 24 seven. Normally a topic takes around an hour to complete. For some people it might take a little bit more. Some people might do it even quicker. It's totally up to you how fast you want to go through it. When you start the course, it would be a good idea to complete the pre-assessment. This is over here. This assesses what topics you are good at and what topics you need to do some work on. Once you've completed it, so it's like a little mock, once you've completed it, you'll be presented with your results. So here are my results for the pre-assessment. You can see what percentage I got. So I got 42% and then a series of topics that I need to do some work on. So you'll notice I didn't do so well in decimals and place value, order in numbers, fractions, etc. This ties into this course navigation here. You'll notice all of these topics, for example, decimals and place value is now highlighted purple rather than the gray here. Any topic that is highlighted purple is a topic that I need to do some work on. Every topic on the course is split into three sections. You can see that here. For example, the addition and subtraction section, you can see it has a revision section, a practice test question, and then a topic exam. So how do these work? The revision section, you'll see some videos where an expert tutor is talking you through the topics. Then you have the practice tests, of which there are three. You can see the easy, medium, and hard. So varying difficulties, obviously, if it's a topic that's new to you or you really struggle with it, you'll want to start at the easy one just so you're getting enough practice in. If it's a topic that you're just brushing up on, you may want to just do the hard one. And then finally, the topic exam. This is where you have exam style questions where you go through and input your answers and then you get a realistic percentage of that topic. Here is an example revision section. They start right from the basics. This is the one for circles. You can see watching this video. The of a circle is called the circumference. If you draw a line from the center of the circle to the circumference, then that is called the radius. And if you draw a line from one edge of the circumference to another and it passes through the center, then that is a diameter. Now, when you draw a diameter, you have one radius and a second radius. So the key thing to remember is that the diameter is twice as long as the radius, or you can see it the other way around. A radius is half the length of the diameter. So three terms to be really clear on circumference, diameter and radius. So you can see it starts right from the basics and then it will work its way up. So you can see here that there's two videos in this topic. Some have a few more. As the videos progress, they tend to get harder and harder or more complex. So they're getting more in depth within the topic and telling you everything that you need to know. The next section of a topic is the practice questions, which again can be found using the course navigation. So revisiting circles. If I click on the practice tests, Again, it gives me the option, I need to do the one which I see fit. So for example, if I'm really struggling with a topic or it's brand new to me, I'd do the easy one. If I'm just brushing up and I'm normally pretty confident with this topic, I'd do the hard one. So visiting the hard one, you are presented with the practice test and you'll see a series of five questions. Every practice test is a similar format. So it'll have a table, a diagram, and then some text and it will, all of them will be multiple choice. So for example, you can see I've got four options here and the question on the left. So calculate the perimeter of the half circle below to one decimal place. So if I work this out on some paper or with my calculator, and then I think that the option is say, for example, 61.7, I can click next question and I can go through and answer them all. Once I've completed the test, I can see which questions I got right or wrong. So you can see I got 60% in this one. I got the first three questions correct, and then I got question four and five wrong. Clicking on these brings me back to the question, and you can see the question still, and you can also see a written solution showing what you should have done. Clicking view video solution takes me to a video where an expert tutor has talked you through the question and shows exactly what you should have done. You can also do this for any questions that you got correct but weren't sure or maybe you had a guess because it's multiple choice here again you can view the written solution and view a video solution so that you fully understand the question the next section of a topic is the topic exam again found 
for each individual topic here. So for example, the circles one, if I click topic exam, it will bring me to the page for the topic exam and then I can attempt the questions. You'll notice these are slightly different than the practice test, but they are more similar to what you will see in your real exam. The reason being, they're not multiple choice anymore. You have to type in your answer here. So say for example, I think the answer to this one is 78.26, I can type that in. For the next one, again, I could type in whatever I think it is. I'm given all of the text that I should need to answer the question. So for example, it tells me to answer to one decimal place, it tells me the radius of the question, you have the diagram, and also it gives you the value of pi. Going through the series of questions, as you do each one, it will tell you what you should have done if necessary. So for example, this one I got incorrect. So I have a written solution that says what I should have done. And then also a video solution that talks me through it. You'll have this for every question of a topic exam. So if you get a question correct, you can still consolidate your knowledge and just make sure you did it the correct way. If you get a question incorrect, hopefully the videos can clear things up for you. Once you feel you are ready and you've completed a good amount of the course, you can start completing mock exams. They can be found here in the course navigation panel. You can see here the full mock exams or the practice exams. These ones are specific to an exam board. These ones are a little bit more general. So for example, the open awards ones, you can work through in the same way that you can with the practice tests or the topic exams, and they have all of the same features. So with the mock exams, there's two different modes that you can do them in. There's the practice mode where you're going through in a similar way to the topic exam, where they're marked question by question and you can view the answer straight away or you can do the exam mode one. This is better when you're closer to the day of your exam. You have the proper time limit for each section and your questions are marked at the end of the exam so there's no sort of nervousness being added midway through by getting questions wrong. So you can see the questions vary in type. So for example, this one is multiple choice, similar to what you would see at the start of a open awards exam. Well, this one you have to answer in the box. So say, for example, I think it's 724. I can enter 724. Another style of question, we've got fractions here. So say, for example, if I think the answer is 8 over 21, I can input that and keep going. And you can see they're marked as you go. So again, you have a written solution, just like in the practice tests or the topic exam. And you also have a video solution for every single question. These mock exams are based off real papers, so they are representative and whatever percentage you achieve can be representative of what, what you may achieve on the day of your real exam. They are of a similar difficulty, so they're not easier, they're not harder, they are more like what you will see on the actual day. Once you've completed a mock exam, you'll be presented with a page similar to what you get on the topic exams, where you can see, again, your percentage, how many questions you attempted, how many you got right, how many marks you achieved, how long you, you had left. So if there's a time limit of two hours here, I had 53 minutes left. So I had quite a bit of time where I could have perhaps checked my answers, etc. Here's the amount of time I took. And then again, all the questions that I got right or wrong with their solutions, both in video format and a written format. When you enroll onto a course, you'll be presented with a student dashboard similar to this one. Here you can see a few main methods of tracking your progress. The first of which is the course completion percentage, as seen here. I've completed all of the course here, so it shows 100%. The next method of tracking your progress is by looking at this percentage score here. So this is your percentage score over all of the topic exams. So every individual topic is assessed at the end of it. And this is the average that you get over the entire course. So I've got 77% here. This is a good indicator that I will be ready to sit the exam. The real pass mark is around 55%. So if I'm getting 60 or more in these, I'm in a very good position and it stops you taking an exam too early as you'll give you a lot more confidence that you're working at a good enough level. Here you can also see the average percentage over the practice questions. So the practice questions range in difficulty, as you'll see shortly, from easy, medium to hard, some of which are just to get you into the topic, so slightly easier than what you may see in the real exam, but the hard ones are very similar to what you might see on the day.